So, looking down into the pit lane, it is the GTDs, fingers on the buttons, ready to go. And we have the 96 Vin Barletta behind the wheel of that car. Uh, just waiting for the chance to get out on the track. And uh, quite an overcast afternoon now, if you're listening on 98.1 FM around Road Atlanta. Let's uh, get a VP Race Fuels, VP uh, Racing Fuel pit and paddock report from Cher Adam. Uh, Cher, what can you tell us? Hello. Well, I can tell you some of the qualifying drivers because, of course, this being a three-driver race for every car in class, including GTD, there are two options for the qualifying drivers in that category, which now has the green flag out and the cars are exiting the pit lane. It is Robbie Foley for Turner Motorsport in the BMW number 96. And in the 86, the championship leading Acura it's the one guy who's not leading the championship, Shinny Mishimi, once again, taking qualifying duties for the Shank crew. In the other car, it is Misha Goikberg qualifying for the 57, the Heinricher racing car. He is sharing that car again with Alvaro Parent and Trent Hinman this weekend. Jeff Westfall, once again, doing qualifying duties for the 63 Scuderia Corsa Ferrari, as he has done every time he's been in the car this year. Gar Robinson has qualified the 74 Mercedes for Riley Technologies every single round of the championship and will do so again today. For every round in which they've participated, Paul Miller Racing Lamborghini has had Madison Snow for qualifying, and he is in the 48 Lamborghini as well, the only car that hasn't yet left the pit lane. Andrew Davis, hometown hero, is in the 30 hardpoint racing Audi, and the only other car that I actually know the qualifying driver right now from looking at the helmets before they left the pit lane, it's Michael De Casada, the Floridian, taking up the duties for the 14 Lexus. And actually, I can look at timing and see the other ones. All right, it's Zach Robichon. Welcome back to Team Canada for the FAF Racing Porsche, back in their red plaid once again. Frankie Montecalvo is in the number 12 Lexus. Welcome back, Frankie. He got married last weekend, so he missed the round at Charlotte. It is Ryan Hardwick, the local boy in the Wright Motorsport Porsche, number 16. Ian James in the 23 Heart of Racing Aston Martin. And last but certainly not least, in the number 44, it's John Parter for the GRT Magnus Lamborghini. So we're out on track. And out has gone the GT Daytonas. Zach Robichon then in the Fastboard Sports Porsche. Beautiful afternoon. 20 degrees in the air, 52 Celsius on the track. That's quite warm, actually. I'm not sure I actually believe that, but the sun has been out for quite a while during the IMSA Prototype Challenge uh, race. Faf car heading down through the S's now with that plaid front end. A flat six. 12 minutes to go already, and we still have to see a time come on. Shinji Mishimi heads across the line in that number 86. 123.8. So that's a decent run for him so far. Then the Mercedes of Gar Robinson, Michael de Casada, Ralph Hardwick, Misha Goikberg next up. But these are very early times, not particularly representative at the moment. If you are just joining us, we've had uh, three free practice sessions of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, including the 
nighttime session yesterday, which was a 90 minute session. Uh, and Shay, we did have a bit of an issue for a couple of cars last night. Gar Robinson, uh, excuse me, uh, was um, Ben Keating behind the wheel of the 74 car, uh, got swiped, but that car seemed to be all right. But the car that did the swiping was the one that was in trouble, one of the LMP2s. <laughs> Makes it sound like you're the Explorer, swiper no swiping. Uh, yes, it was the 85 JDC Miller Motorsport prototype, the, the one that used to be yellow, now is red and white. Chris Miller was behind the wheel at the time. I believe the car is back out on the pit lane and ready to go for qualifying. They did have about 14 hours to try and get the car repaired between the incident last night and the start of their qualifying session. But we'll have to keep an eye on that one because it's being shared this weekend. Chris Miller, Gabby Aubrey, and Mateus Laced supposed to start that car. And we do hope that it can make the start because it did look like a rather hard hit. Yeah, front end damage uh, on that car. And uh, we'll keep an eye up for that car coming out because the problem is they haven't had another session to try everything out. Uh, no warm up before. Uh, before they've come out for qualifying, so it's going to be a bit of a voyage into the unknown. He's in the weather tip car. Did we put in uh, that uh, earlier Jeff on Jack? Jeff, is it right? Getting warm up for the race later on this afternoon. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, we've still got the Michelin Pilot Challenge to come. Just uh, hearing news earlier this afternoon across some of the gossip uh, and press releases that Olivier Pla will be joining MSR for their Honda prototype run next year. Uh, and Sorry, Acura prototype run next year. So that's uh, a couple of the drivers we now know about. And of course, that is no, that team no stranger to Olivier. Uh, and uh, that's that's already Shea Adam looking like a pretty formidable team. Very successful team in the past. Olivier Plois back in 2016 winning this race overall. Petit Le Mans with John Pugh and Oz Negri. So for Plois, it's, it's a homecoming and it's a very well-deserved ride. But it was funny because I did see something on Instagram from Oliver Jarvis mentioning that uh, he hopes Shank takes good care of Olivier and it's going to be weird racing against him next year. But fond wishes to his teammate. Down to eight minutes, still waiting for some fast times to come in. 1.19.4 for Jeff Westphal at the top of the times. What should we be looking for, Jeremy, in terms of uh, a decent time? Jeremy Shaw joining me, John Heine from the uh, IMSA Haggerty Broadcast Centre, Johnny Palmer with us as well for this session. Uh, what what are we? What has the time progression been this week? Uh, this week, the uh, fastest time in uh, GT Daytona so far was set in the first session, actually, yesterday by Brian Sellers in number 48 Lamborghini, 119.9. The lap record, qualifying lap record, was set by Corey Lewis uh, in that same car, I guess, wasn't it, last year, 119.5. But the fastest qualifying time last month for the uh, six-hour race, it wasn't told it was dead, it said it was held here at Irish Raceway Road Atlanta, was Frankie Montecalvo at a 119.7 for Lexus. Already below that. In fact, yes. we've already got a lap record for uh, Jeff Westfall there, 119.463. That is uh, a, new, a new standard. In a gold standard in GTD, beats Corey Lewis's lap record by uh, by uh, about a tenth of a second. Already more than halfway through the session. Short and sharp, uh, Johnny. You're used to this as our voice of the uh, FIA World Endurance Championships. And these quick fire sessions really uh, mean there's no tactics involved. And in this particular 
version of qualifying. You can't touch the car anyway, so if the car is damaged, or uh, that's that's it. Uh, you can't come in and change tyres or anything like that. But it does seem to work, and we get very, very good qualifying sessions. Yeah, that becomes a fuel-saving um, session, doesn't it, really? The longer you're out there, the lighter the car's getting because you're burning all that fuel off. And the uh, question is... Now, how many how many laps can you squeeze into the session? It really depends where you are in relation to the checkered flag and whether you can nip across the line with a handful of seconds left and effectively force an extra lap out of the session. But mightily impressed with Jeff Westphal's pace straight out of the box. I mean, I know they've been um, they've been practicing for three sessions, but a 119.4 really does make a statement uh, for everybody else. Half a second quicker than any better any good time set yesterday. And as Jeremy's just mentioned, also blitzing the previous uh, lap record, the 12 car for Aim Vassar Sullivan, the Lexus of Frankie Montecalvo, uh, jumping up to second fastest now as well, only a tenth of a second shy. So 119.4 for Jeff Westphal, 119.5 for Montecalvo, and Madison Snow late to join the session. I think Shea said the last car on pit road. Well, that doesn't seem to matter because that car, well, briefly up to third fastest, but there goes Shinya Michelle Mishimi with a 119.2. Goodness me, two tenths of a second quicker than Jeff Westphal's time. So it's Mishimi now in the Acura number 86 that goes fastest. Can we just get Jeremy on a hot key saying a new qualifying record? And just keep yeah. repeating that. <laughs> Rinse and Very repeat, cool. Jeremy. Very cool. That, that was a great lap there by Shuni Michimi. I mean, I think perfect conditions right now. We've actually looks like we've got a little bit of cloud cover as well. But it's fairly cool. Uh, track is dry. We've just had a, a three-hour prototype challenge race. So... Uh, track I think is in pretty good shape or cl cl clearly a very good shape because we we're seeing lap record times and we've now got the top uh, eight cars in this session covered by exactly half a second so it is a, it is a hot pace out there right now Jeff Westfall by the way that Ferrari hasn't been with us for the last two races uh, and they 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 missed during that time, the fact that the Ferraris were able to get a little bit, little bit more boost, a little bit, little bit of help from a balanced performance, I say we haven't seen that car for the last two races, but now we're seeing the benefit of that. Jeff Westphal is in the pits, so he won't improve on the current second position. Still a really good qualifying run for the Californian. Yeah, pretty good job. So Machini, who we have seen in the past is uh, a very, very talented driver. Has the heart of racing doing. I know Sarah will be listening in. Set fastest lap last year, Mishimi. Uh, heart of racing. Ian James doing the qualifying here in the number 23 Aston Martin Vantage GT3. He's down in 11th position. In fact, he's just pulled into the pits for the moment. Robbie Forley Andrew. is in the pits as well. Sorry, Jeremy, go ahead. Yeah, no, just going to say uh, a slight improvement there for Andrew Davis in the Team Hardpoint Audi. He has moved up, moved himself up from eighth position into seventh. So we've still got uh, eight cars covered by less now than half a second. So, right. Mackie Montecalvo was on the pole here uh, last month. His time then was 119.7. He's turned at 119.5 in this session, third quickest. Inside the last three minutes now. A little bit of something hanging down on the left rear of the 48 car. Uh, that's uh, Madison Snow. Don't know if he's picked something up from the grass. No, it's a bit of... Looks like a bit of bodywork. JP uh, looking at the same monitor as me, and he's got somewhat younger eyes than mine. Has he picked something up there, or is that a piece of carbon fibre? Uh, I just wonder whether it's one of the strakes on the rear of the car, which is uh, almost part of the diffuser, which is slightly bent out of shape. But... Shea Adam may have the answer in this VP Racing Fuel Pit and Paddock report. Shea, what do you reckon it is? I'm pretty sure that's a piece of tubing that hangs down from the back of the car. It's normally tucked up uh, in between, and it sort of sticks in between the diffuser and then the hard piece of the bumper. But it looks like it's just flapping a little bit more than it normally does. Nothing to be worried about. It's clearly not slowing down at the moment. 
Yeah, could be. Yeah, yeah. could be. Breathe a pipe or something like that. Uh, into the pit lane for that red, white and black number 48 Lamborghini. For some reason, even as I was saying Lamborghini, I had the cadence of Maserati in my head. I don't right. know why. <laughs> Uh, Nick, the, it's the influence of Nick Damon, the uh, the the MC20, of course, is uh, has just been shown to the world, and uh, we wait to find out whether that will become a GT3 race car. There's all kinds of rumours about that particular machine and what potential competition future it might have. 44 seconds to go. Misha Goikberg still out there in the Acura number 57. Andrew Davis for Team Hardpoint still out there. GRT Magnus still out there with John Potter. The black and blue Mobile One Acura, the 57. Just uh, coming down to turn six now. This will be the last lap for this car. And ooh, had a good first sector. See how they do through turn seven with Misha turning in now. Absolutely on his own in the afternoon sunshine just into the afternoon sun very high in the sky shadows very short now and sun out very pleasant here yeah no improvement in the second sector there for Misha so I don't think you'll be able to squeak anything more out of this car a slap I think we might see him coming into the pits actually Jeremy if I'm honestly yeah good call so he remain in the sixth position, just ahead of Andrew Davis, who uh, remains out there. But I don't think, no, he's not improving either. Uh, so I think he'll be bringing the number 30 team hardpoint Audi onto the pit lane. So uh, unless John Potter can do something special as a check and flag waves, it's going to be Acura, Ferrari, Lexus, Lamborghini and BMW in the top five. Separated by under four tenths of a second. Uh, are you happy with that, Johnny Palmer? That's, uh, that's competitive, that's variety. No, no, it's certainly improved an awful lot on the times we saw in free practice and um, didn't necessarily anticipate an Acura to be so strong, although they were third in FP2 with a 120.2, but that has chiseled an awful lot of extra time uh, off that effort from yesterday, a full second pretty much for the number 86 uh, Maya Shank Racing Acura NSX. The Scuderia Corsa Ferrari 488, 63 of Jeff Westphal set the pace initially, uh, but was bumped down to effectively the, the other side of the front row within GTD, but only by uh, a tenth and three quarters. And then a Lexus, Lamborghini and BMW. So five different manufacturers in the top five. Some uh, splendid evenness really in GT Daytona and testament to, to all those behind the balance of performance um, to equalize very very different machinery uh, and that car of course won here uh, what seems a lifetime ago but was only a few weeks ago now so backing up the performance in the six hour race that we had here at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta Shinya's first pole position uh, in this championship the drive pink auto yeah, it's only his fourth nation start, car. Least, so. Yeah, so that's one for one. Pack in now. <laughs> yeah. 100%. So, very good for that team. And as we've mentioned, a very big few weeks for the MSR organisation. Unlikely to continue with the GT Daytona program certainly not with two cars but stepping up into prototypes for next season with uh, one of the two Acuras that will be actually they'll get two chassis but they'll run one car and those are the cars that have been run up until now exclusively by Penske Penske moving on to pastures new Shea Adam is trying to get hold of the team. They're in a state of uh, excitement and uh, celebration, I think, Shea. Oh, it was a little bit interesting, though, John, because up on the pit box was neither Mario Farnbacher nor Matt McMurray. So uh, oh, they're sitting on the wall. I'm trying to... Guys, can you please answer your phone? That'd be really nice. Thank you. Well... Uh, 
don't think we're going to get a chat with uh, any of the team members there. So congratulations to them. It'll be the uh, GT Le Mans cars that come out next, the factory cars, the big brothers and sisters of the cars that we've seen. Very highly developed and the same type of cars that go to Le Mans, of course, for the 24 hours in race in the... Um, uh, in the WEC, and uh, Johnny, you're going to have to get used to seeing BMWs again, I know. which you haven't seen for a while. Oh, that's a rare treat for me, absolutely. Yeah, the M8 GTE, sadly a distant memory in the World Endurance Championship, but Gil still very much going strong with BM BMW Team RLL in the state. So, yeah, going to be great to see. Well, also, the uh, Porsches back again. I know they uh, missed the previous round didn't they to mid ohio because of the complications of getting out of le mans after a suspected covid19 outbreak within porsche ranks and that took a lot of works drivers away from the nurburgring 24 hours and also prevented them from racing in the the, the next round in the imza weather tech sports car championship they were back for mid ohio although a tough weekend there just last weekend on the roval um, so porsches bmws and the chevrolet corvettes the uh, mid-engine corvettes are the uh, uh, the weapons of choice, if you like, in GT Le Mans. And all these cars have had the opportunity to run in free practice, three of those sessions. There was a big story, of course, back end of the Charlotte race meeting with a heavily damaged number four Chevrolet Corvette. And I'm assuming that is exactly the same car that has been repaired. I know there was a hope from Corvette that they, they would be able to retain that chassis for Oli Gavin Tommy Milner and Marcel Fessler. So delight down at Acura to take a pole position for the latest round ahead of the Motul Petit Le Mans tomorrow. And I know Shea working incredibly hard to still try and get a word with either Mario Farnbacher or Matt McMurray as reaction to that pole position for Meyershank Racing with Kerb Agajanian. In the meantime, let's uh, point you towards the runners and riders for the GT Le Mans. Cher, what do you reckon uh, in terms of who is qualifying here? Exciting times. John Edwards is going to be qualifying the 24 BMW. That's the black one. He was on pole here about two... Uh, yeah, about two years ago, because it was a slightly different date back then. But it's Connor Filippi who's going to be qualifying the red BMW. That's the 25. And Connor trying to get his second ever pole position, the first one coming at the 12 hours of Sebring just a couple of years ago. Lawrence Vantor is the qualifying driver for the 912. All is standard as uh, operating procedure there, as we're used to seeing Lawrence qualifying. And I believe that is the green, white, and black helmet of one Mr. Nicholas Tandy of not too far away from you and Johnny, of where you call home. So Nick will be going out trying to get a pole position here. Three wins at Petit Le Mans, but a pole would be something nice and shiny and new. And as for Corvette Racing, well, we've got the yellow one and we've got the silver one. The yellow one is the number three leading the championship. Jordan Taylor has gotten the last two pole positions in a row. But it's Antonio Garcia's turn to go out for qualifying. So let's see if he can keep the pride alive. And for the four Corvette, that would be the silver one, the one that was rebuilt after that uh, moment at Charlotte last weekend. What a story this could be. That car, which was rebuilt in two days. Tommy Milner was driving at the time. Tommy Milner is going out for qualifying duties. And Tommy Milner, the only guy in GTLM going out for qualifying today without a pull to his name. Can he change it here? I hope so. Thank you, Cher, for that VP Racing Fuel Pit and Paddock Report. Jeremy Shaw, uh, the force is strong with the Corvettes. The mid-engine car has been almost invincible in race trim since the 4th of July return to racing. Haven't always captured the pole positions, though. Uh, true, true. It's uh, that they've... Uh... Yeah, but, but Jordan Taylor certainly has been stellar in qualifying uh, this season. Just looking back, uh, the uh, lap record in GTLM was set last year by James Collado in the Ferrari for Easy Competition. Of course, that car not here this weekend. That was 1 minute 15.639. The, the uh, qualifying time a month ago for the six hours was Nick Tandy at a 116.1. So... 
that's, I guess, the first uh, time we're going to be looking at. The fastest time we've seen so far this week was set yesterday in a second session by uh, Antonio Garcia at a 116.9, so almost a full second slower than that pole time set last month. So I'm sure we're going to be quicker, a good bit quicker than that. The question is, uh, can anybody get close to James Collado's lap record in the Ferrari? It's Jeremy Shaw, who's with Johnny Palmer and me, John Hindorp, in the IMSA Haggerty Broadcast Centre. New, brand new set of shiny Michelin slicks going on to the Porsche 912. And I think, if I'm honest, after the season that they have had so far, which is in some respects has promised quite a lot, Johnny, the Porsche will want to finish strongly. Obviously, no chance of the championship now after the team's brush with COVID after Le Mans, which cost them the race at VIR and therefore uh, took them out of championship contention. They've been fast, but they haven't yet won a race, which I know is a source of some concern. Was talking to John Bennett, the man at the head of Core Autosport, who runs uh, that team and operates that team then, uh, you know, they want to finish strong because they know, they know they're not coming back next year. Yeah, it started really well, actually, the season with three back-to-back -back second places. But as you say, that elusive win still just out of their grasp with three rounds still to go. This would be a, you know, a, a huge one to win and not necessarily get their season back on track, but at least a, a, a definite feather in the cap if they can come away with victory in Petit Le Mans tomorrow. But uh, it's Corvette that lead the Constructors' Championship on 272 points coming into this round, 258 for BMW, and as you say, slightly more distant in third Porsche on 216, with just the one appearance from a Ferrari, which was at the Daytona 24 hours at the start of the year. And then as far as drivers are concerned, it's Antonio Garcia and Jordan Taylor who are level pegging on points, obviously, because they drive together, 261 points ahead of the other uh, Corvette duo of Oli Gavin and Tommy Milner on 237. But pretty tight right behind Gavin and Milner, actually, with Spengler and Di, F Di Filippi for BMW and the two other lads from the Beamer, uh, Jesse Crone and John Edwards on 231. So more deciding about well, who's going to be second in the championship quite possibly in the remaining rounds great to see that silver and yellow corvette though so badly damaged just a week ago at charlotte uh, has been rebuilt as shea says i hadn't realized it was such a short space of time two days to exactly. fix that car up and then transport it to road atlanta really impressive let's see how they get on yeah not too far to come down yeah. the road of course uh, and uh, if you remember, as she has just reminded me, it was only a year ago when we first saw the silver Corvette before the green flag. Uh, this, that's how new this new C8R is with the engine in the middle. A real departure for Corvette talking to all of the drivers earlier on the season for Mobile One The Grid and they were all saying it's been a steep learning curve, but the car has been outstanding. Now, yes, when you take on a new car, Jeremy, the performance gains that you find in the early running it is effectively the low hanging fruit. And I don't mean that uh, disrespectfully, but you will find big gains early on. But my goodness, this appears to be a quality platform for Corvette moving forward really does, doesn't it? I mean, they've just made uh, tremendous progress with this car. Yeah, they've been testing it for a fair time. Last year here was the first time we saw it in public, but they've been out for a long, long time before that, getting ready. Uh, certainly, and they came into this season very, very well prepared, quite clearly, and they've just built on that fr from there. Uh, Johnny talked about the fact that Antonio Garcia and Jordan Taylor 24 points over their teammates. Uh, if they have a 30, if they leave here with a 30-point advantage, that game over. Uh, that would be the championship one. Right. Okay. Three. Yeah, because there are so few cars in the class, of course. So long as you finish, right. you're going to get some. Or as long as you're classified, you're going to get some. Uh, and you, points. if you start, you get classified. So. Uh, Correct. That's that's right. So, so yeah, they, they have, have to the, get the, to the, the start. The difference from first from first to sixth is ten points. Uh, so if if you lose ten at each of the final. Uh, 
well, actually, less, less than that now, isn't it? They're, they're almost certainly going to clinch the championship um, after this weekend, or, or very, very close um, to doing so. If they have a 20-point lead, well, I should say, if they have a 20-point lead leaving here, it'll be all over, because we've, got, we've only got, what, two races to go after here, haven't we? Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, so the, tech, the worst uh, is a sixth place finish, which is 25 points. You get 35 for a win. So anybody else going to only make up 20, uh, assuming they start each of the final two races. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if you're not used to GT Le Mans qualifying, and uh, Johnny isn't, so we'll remind him and everybody else, the usual script, such as it is, is Corvette goes out first, mm -hmm. uh, Porsche wait a bit, then they go out, then BMW go out last. Uh, okay. Possibly with only six minutes, seven minutes to go. Uh, they're all on Michelin tyres, of course, but uniquely in GT Le Mans, there are different uh, compounds and constructions available to the teams in GT Le Mans because this is what's called a confidential tyre category. So they have specific tyre compounds that they can draw on, normally three different slick tyre compounds for the weekend and you can mix, mix and match them they'll be they don't call them soft medium and hard they call them cold medium and hot in terms of operating temperatures but effectively uh, that's what it comes down to and sometimes we do see all three compounds being used depending on the circuit on the car at the same time depending on where, you know, if you've got, like, Lime Rock Park, for example, a, a, a lot of right-handed corners, you might put the hardest of the compound on the left front or perhaps the left rear if you think you're leaning on that more than any others. Uh, and each of these manufacturers and each of the drivers tend to have their own ideas about how to bring the Michelin tyres up to temperature and therefore to operating pressure. Uh, it does seem as though Corvette take a wee bit of time, and the likelihood will be that they'll stay out for the bulk of the 15-minute session, of which, by the way, we've already had six minutes. 1.18.1, Jeremy Shaw, for Tom Milner. He's the first one to put in a representative time, as the Porsches, uh, a third of the way through the session, just start to roll out the 9.11 and the 9.12 in the hands of Tandy and Vanto, respectively, have rolled out. Uh, time's still a bit to come, Jeremy, from what we're seeing at the moment. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I'm sure the next lap will be uh, probably a good one, more, more representative lap time it does. So it's, it's still fairly, relatively cool uh, today at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. Fall is definitely coming. It is dry, though, that's the good news. And I think the track, uh, as we've seen from GTD, is in pretty good shape. So I think we're going to see time, some pretty quick times. In fact, there is a good time. Now, from a Tommy Milner, 116.2. Uh, so that is uh, within a tenth now of Nick Tandy's pole time from last month's six-hour race. 9-11 going into the first corner. Turns in. Gets on the throttle. You get on the throttle so early through turn one. Up over the top of the... Skyline at two and three, and then diving down through the serpentine S's up to turn five. Run the right hand side Michelin's along the orange and blue curve to the right hand side, and then turning, trying to miss the little bump that's there. 16 2 now as Tonio Garcia starts to get up to speed as well with a 16.5. That is so the two Corvettes as ever within a couple of three tenths of each other and down through the years Jeremy how many times have we seen that what well, you can never you can never level an accusation at Corvette that there's a number one car and a number two car I know they have normally been number three and four or 63 and 64 but they turn out two cars with very very similar performance uh, potential and quite often we see them separated particularly in qualifying by the finest of margins yeah we do don't we what was the margin last weekend <laughs> uh, when in qualifying it was wasn't it I forget what it was now wasn't the four cars within a tenth of a second or something it was ridiculously yes. close um, so uh, I think we you know, I, I, I would expect to see the same here well in fact uh, between Tommy Miller and Nick Tandy now there's uh, exactly one hundredth of a second uh, 116.110 for Milner 116.120 for Nick Tandy so that's quicker than 
the last pull time, which was a 16167. So we've just got a wee bit quicker than that, but there'll be more to come. Antonio Garcia must be tuned in on 98.1 as he goes through in a 15475. New lap record. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to record that, Jeremy, and just literally have it ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's been extraordinary. Um, I, I was checking some of the stats earlier this week, and the amount of new bests that we've seen with new cars, new tyre partner, of course, in the last uh, couple of seasons in IMSA, it's been extraordinary, the amount of pace and the amount of records that have been broken, both in qualifying trim and in race trim, proving again that racing keeps improving, Johnny, and ultimately, particularly with cars like GT Le Mans cars uh, and the GTD cars, which are uh, more than loosely based on, on street cars, racing improves the breed still. Yeah, certainly so, and, and that's testament to um, the kind of global category, if you like, as well, that, uh, you know, not only infiltrates racing in the States, but also uh, around Europe and indeed the world when it comes to GTLM, uh, but GT3 as well has taken the GT racing world by storm, and it's great that collectively these cars keep getting faster. They need to keep them level pegging and even where possible. BMW is now, by the way, joining the session too for the final five minutes or so. That's exactly what you said. It's almost like it's mandated in the regulations that way. You haven't seen the SSRs then, have you? The <laughs> <laughs> I think I said six or seven minutes, so they were a bit later than even I. But this is not unusual, let's put it that way. Jeremy, that the RLL BMWs, Real Letterman and Lanigan BMWs, come out late. They do seem to be able to get their tyres oh. up to temperature and pressure and very, go quickly, very quickly, quickly with it. And Don't indeed, Conor just... De Filippi has just bounced to the top, Jeremy, in style. Indeed, a 115.434, just his second flying lap. Uh, it took the uh, Corvettes four or five laps to get up to speed. And once again, yeah, the BMWs go out there and they are on it right from the start. Sometimes it costs them because uh, the track sometimes isn't better at the end of the session, uh, at the beginning. Yeah, point. But uh, it's certainly uh, it's paid off here for Condi Filippi at the moment by 0 0.041 of a second at the moment. They're only over at Antonio Garcia. And this is the fifth GTLM track record, qualifying lap record this season in the ninth race of the championship for GTLM. So down under the last four minutes now. Lap record already in the rear view mirror for qualifying. Qualifying record gone. How fast can they go? 0 0.041 of a second between first and second. Felipe the 25 car and Corvette Garcia the number three. Then a whole tenth of a second, actually nearly two tenths of a second further back. Lawrence Vanter for the Porsche GT team. In their last appearance for a while at Motul Patilamon. Suspect that we will see them back in some form or another in the near future. Garcia's on a good one here. He was purple in sector one, purple in sector two. Now as he heads down the back straight towards the turn 10, turn eight, OK? Right from the middle of the road, drifts to the right-hand side, gets the braking done and turns in. Out through 10B, under the Fox Factory Bridge, through what well, is effectively turn 11, but it's flat through there, through turn 12, get the line right across the line. Oh. Oh, 15.163, one minute, 15.163. Fabulous run, and Corvette, with two minutes and 18 seconds to go, are back on top, but it's not done yet. Don't move away from the side of the track, from your radio, and from wherever you're watching IMSA.tv, because this is not finished yet by any stretch of the imagination. John Edwards does his fastest lap for the 24 car, the 15.8. 15-8 also for Nick Tandy. Super, super close uh, behind. Well, there's, there's almost the top three and the bottom three, isn't there? That are so close together. But now that gap in the front, Jeremy, has stretched out to the better part of three tenths of a second after that wonderful lap from Antonio Garcia. 
Yeah, stunning effort uh, by the Spaniard there, Antonio Garcia. He's just driving better and better and better, isn't he? It's in remarkable. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't think he's uh, 40 years of age, but he is exactly what he is. He's driving brilliantly right now. There goes the number 24 car, John Edwards, across the line. Does improve for 15-6, and he is now, uh, but still, you know, four-tenths of a second. Uh, behind the quickest time by Garcia. Conde Felipe, by the way, he turned two laps almost identical at a 115.4. So good for oh. second and third, uh, but uh, second it will do for him. Antonio Garcia then in the pit lane. Yeah, Antonio, what did you think of that lap? That's it. I can't go any faster. I'm coming in. Get the kettle yeah. off. <laughs> That's Stunning. it. Yeah, yeah Stunning very effort. good indeed. And those guys, by the way, are that good. They And you have to be. Remember, Going to start the race with the tyres that you qualified on, and I don't mean the compound of the tyres, the actual tyres. So you're taking a little bit of life out of them for that first stint on Saturday. Into the pits also for Conor de Felipe in second by that two and three quarter tenths. So here's his teammate coming through. John Edwards now in third position inside of the second row. He's going to go through and complete the lap as both Porsches are in the pits. Was that an improvement by... John, it was not, but he got through Johnny Palmer before the end of the lap, so he has got another one if he can ring some more performance out of those Michelin tyres. But of course, the BMWs have been out much for, for far fewer laps than everybody else. Yes, so there's theoretically more life in the tyres and uh, more life for the start of the race tomorrow as well. Nice clear track ahead of him, nobody else circulating currently in GTLM and what was his first sector time like to wait for that to come through actually although it was a very it's a very very short first sector on this lap under 10 seconds in fact so the check and flag waved behind I think he's, I think John he's out of it you reckon I think, he's backed yeah. out of it yeah I think so yeah. he's going to come through now and uh, prove me wrong but I think he'll be diving in the pits just didn't seem to have the body language going through turn six and seven and seven in particular you have to be very committed there on any lap but particularly on a qualifying lap so pole position for antonio garcia mm. and corvette racing jeremy yeah very very impressive nick tandy who was on the pole here last month brings up the tail of the field at a 115.858 that in itself is three tenths quicker than he went to get that pole position one month ago just shows how good the track conditions are right now and what a brilliant job antonio garcia has done to uh, claim yet another pole position a really really fine effort this is his uh, fifth pole position uh, brings him equal now with his uh, co-driver in this car jordan taylor john edwards did peel off into the pit lane and by the way that time that jeremy was talking about for tandy faster than his pole time a month or so ago uh, almost seven tenths of a second away from now the new qualifying record of 115.163 for antonio garcia nothing absolutely nothing stands still in motor racing Shit, adam uh trying to get a hold of jordan taylor if you just bear with me for a second okay Thank you. We'll uh, have a listen. So what, uh, w one more little note, John. We've seen uh, the GTLM field often changing tyres before the race, which means they give up their grid positions. It was, was it last race or the, I think it was a race before? All, all the road, yeah, it was at mid-Ohio. All four cars elected to change their their tyres before the race, change their uh, qualifying tyres before the race. So they all went to the back of the field, which means they started the same order in which they qualified. Uh, but having having turned you know nine laps on this set of tyres for Antonio Garcia, it certainly wouldn't, be, wouldn't surprise me if he gave up uh, the the pole starting position tomorrow and then we'll see what other teams follow suit with that uh, he will still of course retain the honor of having the pole position but he is conceivably might not start from the pole tomorrow we'll have to wait and see over the next few hours just so i'm clear jeremy does that mean the back of the whole of the grid or just the back within its within no no just within class. the class John. yeah just within the class yeah, so it's actually not that much no, of a, a well disadvantage. Uh, th there are tyre restrictions, of course, this weekend. It is not unlimited tyres in any of the classes. Uh, so it may well be that that set of tyres that he has used will have to get used at some stage. And th there could be a train of thought, depending on what the weather conditions are like tomorrow, 
and, and, and what particular uh, choices were made on the tyre compounds, they well, might as well get that out of the way anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I think for this race, probably, John, I, I think I probably would be surprised if they did change tyres. You know, it's such a long, yeah. long way to go in the race. You might as well start at the front, even if the uh, the set of tyres isn't isn't optimal. Uh, but uh, it'll it'll can't depend depend on who else changes tyres. And and if teams do change tyres, they let to go to the back. The order in which they uh, they then start actually is in order of when they lodge the intent to change tyres with the race officials. Just to make things a little bit more complicated. Yeah, so if you that get that could go so, down to tenths of seconds. So if you get, if so if you get it yes. in first and everybody goes in, you, you'll end up at the sharp end of the grid. Is is what Jeremy's Correct. saying? I'm sort of paraphrasing that away. But Antonio Garcia looking far uh, younger than the age that Jeremy said from uh, earlier on. Um, so he's uh, so doing something right. Uh, 22 sets of mediums for DPI, 22 sets of mediums for LMP2s, 20 sets of uh, Michelin Confidential tyres for the GT LM, 18 sets of the S9M for GT Daytona. Uh, Shea Adam uh, can uh, talk to Antonio Garcia's teammate, Jordan Taylor. Jordan, coming in with the points lead. Uh, the last couple of races, it's been you who's gotten the pole position. What is it about this number three Corvette that just seems to like to start at the front? Yeah, I mean, it was a heck of a lot by Antonio. I don't think we really expected to get the pole this weekend, uh, just looking at how practice was going. Um, but, I mean, I think he, he just pulled out something special, to be honest. I think it came out of nowhere. Uh, but, yeah, uh, it's been a, a heck of a year. I think it's the fourth pole for our car. Uh, fifth pole for Corvette this year, and you know, hopefully, we can bring home another win tomorrow night. How much did it help that you guys did that testing here not very long ago? You were able to roll off the truck pretty strong, too. Yeah, I don't think it was much for outright pace. I think that test was more down to uh, you know, reliability and, and you know, drivability over the stint. I think at the sixth hour, we saw a lot of degradation and drop off throughout the run, so I think it was more of a race test than a qualifying test, but. I think, you know, starting up front is it's huge. It's, it's tough to pass in this class. The track is always important, um, even if it's 10 hours. So uh, definitely happy with the with the result today. But, you know, tomorrow is a, a completely different story. Are you guys surprised with the lap times that we're seeing? Because it's a lot faster than it was just a month ago. Temperature have to do with that? Yeah, I think it's almost all temperature related. I think um, grip level yesterday didn't feel super high. We actually didn't think the qualifying pace was going to be that quick but i think the track temp dropped quite a bit uh from yesterday to today just with all the cloud cover uh, and the cooler conditions which looks like it's gonna be the same case tomorrow so uh it'll be interesting to see how the long runs are we haven't had much testing time on that uh even night practice was a bit warmer uh track temp than today in the sun so uh tomorrow i think everyone's going in with a little bit of a question mark but uh, at least we'll be starting up front yeah congratulations on pole position uh and please give our best to antonio thanks for chatting with us jordan we appreciate it go celebrate all right thank you john taylor in that vp racing fuel pit and paddock report with Shea adam at uh, just seven tenths of a second across the whole gt le mans field what kind of witchcraft are the bop wizards at imza applying as dave olcock gotta say when you have uh, the very different uh, characteristics of a rear-engine flat six, a mid-engine V8, and a front-engine V8. Uh, cars uh, that the BMW now the oldest car, of course, JP in that uh, uh, in that trio of manufacturers there. And, and yet, I mean, you know, Corvette obviously with the newest car, potentially you'd say they might have a wee bit of an advantage, but they've just come off having the oldest car, swings, and if you will, roundabouts. But Dave Olcock is not wrong on at IMSA Radio when he says that the BOP, the technical guys, have, have done a, a cracking job. They have. Um, yeah, there's a little bit more data, you could argue, knocking around about the Porsche RSR19, because that was in competition within Europe from September last year. So I'm sure IMSA had access to the data uh, that the ACO and the FIA had with the World Endurance Championship. Corvette was brand new, wasn't it, at Daytona? Mm -hmm. Um, so, yes, there's a, there needed to be an extra algorithm inserted there. But um, the later you get on in the year, the more data there is knocking around, the more you can marginally adjust things. And it's just literally, you know, just 
trimming little bits here and there now, my, minuscule changes um, to equalise the field, but uh, a cracking job. And you know, hats off again to what's going on in GT Daytona because it's exactly the same there, where you've got far more manufacturers on pretty much an even playing field. Prototype to come in terms of qualifying for Mortal Petty Le Mans, Johnny Palmer along with Jeremy Shaw and me, John Hindorf in the Haggerty IMSA Global Broadcast booth. It's Shea Adam, our VP, Racing Field Pit and Paddock reporter, and she can give us the names of the qualifying drivers. I've just spied Juan Pablo Montoya in his dark grey woolly pullover sitting uh, in the inf <laughs> on the infield. So uh, he, hasn't, uh, he hasn't got stripped for action. Who's qualifying? Well, it's not going to be a Superman moment for Juan Pablo Montoya, that's for sure. He's not going to rip off his pullover and find a, a fire suit underneath because his car is already occupied by his full-season teammate, Dane Cameron. That's the number six act through Team Penske. The team car has Ricky Taylor behind the wheel, so that will be a fun car to watch, too. Three wins in a row on the bounce for that duo. In the number five Mustang sampling Cadillac, that's Sebastian Bourdais piloting that machine. And in the 31, Whalen Engineering, Act, uh, formerly Action Express, the bright red Cadillac. Well, a year ago, Felipe Nazar got his first pole position in this series here at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. He is doing qualifying once again. So let's see how fast Felipe can go. The number 10, Konica Minolta Cadillac, that's the black one, the glossy black one. Ryan Briscoe doing qualifying duties for that car. Thank you, Ray Ray, for zooming in on it too. That helps us out. Gabby Aubrey is behind the wheel of the white with red accent. Number 85, J.D. C. Miller Motorsport. That's important because that car was involved in a crash last night during night practice back out on the pit lane and the green flag is waving. So the session is good to go. That car will participate in qualifying. Last but not least, the Mazda camps. Well, for the number 77 Mazda, it's Tristan Nunez, his white and gold helmet behind the wheel of that one. And the number 55, it's Tinkville time. The two time <laughs> Le Mans winner, Harry Tinkville going out for that car. Uh, did we get to the bottom of our uh, rat -a tat tat from the engine of the the Mazda share with that um, similar sort of sound as we heard from uh, the uh, air-driven contraption on the turbo that uh, the Multimatic Fords used to have? We did not, mostly because when Harry Tinkle, and many thanks to him for coming off the pit stand, going into the hauler, trying to be able to have a conversation with us, Skype didn't want to play along. And it's not really the kind of question that you can convey over text. It is the sort of thing that you need to be able to say that ticky ticky noise and actually make the sound so that the person knows what you're talking about. It, it's car talk radio, uh, courtesy of NPR all over again. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of that. Uh, very uh, clever system that uh, Multimatic utilised in the uh, Ford prototype, sorry, in the Ford um, well, actually it was a really prototype, <laughs> wasn't it? Freudian slip, uh, like in, it. The, uh, in the Ford GT Le Mans car the Le Mans prototype, it was built to win Le Mans and it won Le Mans, did its job very, very good, very, very good indeed uh, across the top of the skyline then for the prototypes, a mix of LMP2s and DPIs Jeremy, we've had plenty of variety uh, in the six races at the front of the field this year. Yeah, that's absolutely right. We've only had six rounds of the uh, DPI Championship coming into uh, this weekend. We've had five different pole sitters. The only repeats up pole sitter is the uh, evergreen Tremelas in the wrong pole, both at the Tona and here at Road Atlanta last month. Sorry, I know he's itching, particularly having won the last three races in a row, to, uh, to get another one here. Uh, this uh, afternoon, although I think uh, Shay said that Ricky Taylor is going to be qualifying that number seven car. So, uh, Ricky this season uh, has been on the pole position. He had the pole at Road America. Jeremy, that, that start is that uh, different cars or different drivers or a combination drivers. there all? Right, drivers. drivers. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Super. Very good indeed. That was Jeremy Shaw. And we now have air time and it's Felipe Nasser for Wheel and Engineering the number 31 has got down to a 112.9 we've got to be thinking 110 Jeremy 60 oh, no, 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 no. 8 
eights for sure. Eights. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, the fastest time of the, of, the, of the weekend so far, the week so far, was set yesterday afternoon by Philip Albuquerque in kind of a 31. That was a 9.2. But the uh, the lap, well, the, the fastest lap, the, the pole position last month, as I said, was Elio Castro Neves, a 108. 0.674. The lap record was set by Felipe Nasser last year, 108.457. Right, so that's what we've got to be looking out for. That's hauling around here. Well, I'm also remembering back to, I say remembering back, I, I actually watched the start of last year's race as a matter of research, and I remember Felipe Nasser was putting for the opening stint at the 2019 version of Motul Petit Le Mans and just scampered away in very unlike IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship fashion. I was kind of like, is he in a different division here? He was so dominant on that opening stint. So I really feel like Felipe's well at home around this place. I'm not surprised that he leaps to the top of the times within this session and everybody else has got a stern job in order to catch him however we're not yet into the 108 a low 109 offered so far from nasa in the 31 car with tristan nunez just a tenth and a half shy in the fastest of the master so far number 77 so he's done a 109.3 a 109.5 offered by harry tinkler in the 55 then dane cameron in the best of the Acuras from Team Penske, a 109.9 from Dane. Gabby Obrey slots between the two uh, DPIs from Acura, in fact, with his Cadillac DPI for JDC Miller Motorsport. So number 85 in the control of the young Frenchman has just done a 109.9. Uh, still Felipe Nasa topping the times with a low 109. And that, and that is, is quicker just... already, John, than the, the fastest stat from yesterday, that 1902. Wow. But uh, now here we are. This is uh, throwing overhand now, as you would say, John Hindoff. Harry Technol to the top of 108.636. That's uh, within two tenths of a second of the Brazilian Felipe Nasser's lap record. Within the space of about half a second, we had three names at the top of the times there. Ricky Taylor, <laughs> pursued by Tristan Nunes, and then Harry Ticknell, bettering the two of them. But yeah, blink, if you'd blinked, you would have missed all three uh, briefly at the sharp end. I, I was about to report them as they happened, and then as they changed <laughs> one to the second, I thought, oh, well, I can do the second. I, I just don't bother. <laughs> oh, dear. Such is the joys of this uh, yeah, four Felipe Nassau, racing. all of a sudden, is fifth. Yes. <laughs> wow. That's my fault, singing his praises. <laughs> yeah, fully half a second to win. Yeah, well, uh, well, second, third, fourth and fifth are covered by uh, point zero, not very much. <laughs> yes, exactly so. There's a new time for NASA, a 108.9. So he gets a little closer to Harry Tignall. Uh, he's just in a 108.6, remember two and a half seconds between the provisional pole sitter in LMP2 and the rest of the field. It will surprise no one who listens to us on a regular basis that Patrick Kelly is bossing things for PR1 Matheson Motorsport in the number 52 Orica LMP2 07 of the Gibson V8 Power. And he has put in that time and basically said, right, I've slapped that on the table. There you go, lads. Catch me if you can. And he's come into the pits. Yeah, and of course in LMP2, because it's a pro-am class, the, the AM driver, the, the lesser rated driver, has to qualify the car. So these cars are capable of going a little bit quicker than that, but it's still a really good lap from Patrick Kelly, uh, from, uh, from from Patrick Kelly in that PR1 Matheson Motorsports car. This is his his uh, fifth start in the IMSA Web Tech Sports Car Championship and in his fourth time qualifying it. And unless something really bizarre happens, he's going to have his fourth consecutive pole position. New provisional pole in DPI, it's Dan yes. Cameron. Uh, the new best to aim for is just under 108.6. 108.593. 60. Oh, and of course, Ricky Taylor has aimed for it and hit it. 108.506. So 0 0.087 between first and second. 0 0.043 between second and third. Just over a tenth of a second between the top three at the moment, the two Acuras and the number 55, the Dark Soul Red Crystal. Harry Tinkle driven Mazda 
DPI. As Shears just pointed out, and this is, I'm, I'm really getting annoyed with them now because I'm not being allowed to finish a sentence, Johnny Palmer, and finish a thought before something changes on the timing screen. It's brilliant. Most disrespectful for uh, our business, isn't it? We need to, we need gaps in between to comment on the latest that's happened. No, not a bit of it. We love sessions like this that are relentless. Still six and a half minutes to go, and we've still got half a tenth to try and find on last year's pole position. Remember, a 108.457 is the record to beat from 2019. Still just about a little bit of pace left in the track as the cars get lighter, but the tyre wear is increasing as over the line goes the number six car of Dane Cameron. And that was a slower lap, maybe trying to find a little bit of space uh, in front of his car. Tricky to do on a two and a half mile racetrack. Yeah, I think just giving the tyres a bit of a breather there, probably Johnny for Dane Cameron, a slower lap there, a 1.14. Ricky Taylor's time was just about a tenth of a second away from his previous best lap. But I think uh, Dane Cameron, uh, he'll uh, you know, give the tyres a little bit of a break and then go for uh, go for it again and see if he can find that elusive, well, for him, uh, you know, less than a tenth of a second or just about a tenth of a second to get that new lap record. Uh, just on five and a half minutes to go. Uh, Fast Friday continues, remember. Uh, we have a couple of races to round off the entertainment here from Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. Porsche, race two, coming. Johnny and I getting involved in that from at least the play-by-play -play point of view. Uh, and then we'll get the whole team together for the Michelin Pilot Challenge at the end of the day which will round off a very full friday saturday warm-up then the third of the three imsa porsche carrera cup races then the build-up in michelin countdown with green and the green flag at 12:40 eastern for mortal patilamon 2020 michelin post race tech to wind up the weekend in the wee small hours if you are in europe or the UK. It is going to be a late night on Saturday. So early night tonight, everybody. Get yourselves ready for a long one because we've seen it so many times, so many times, that this race goes down to effectively the run of the flag from the last pit stop. And we've got three hours and 43 minutes tomorrow after official sunset to the end of the 10 hours. It's the latest that the yeah. race will ever have ended and it will be the most darkness that the race has ever had, Jeremy. That's right, John. Yeah, more than a third of the race it will be held in uh, in dark conditions here after the sun has set. So that's uh, that's certainly a new standard there. Uh, Dane Cameron last time around at 108.7, so he wasn't able to improve. And um, he's still, uh, I think he's still, still out there. Harry Tickle, however, he is into the pits with a third fastest time in that number 55 Mazda. 108.6, so it's 108.506 for, for Ricky Taylor, 108.593 for Dane Cameron, Tickle 108.6, also 108.6 is Felipe Nasser, number 31 uh, wheel and engineering Cadillac. The big surprise for me is Sebastian Bourdais, eighth fastest in yeah, the Mustang that's... sampling car, behind his own teammate Gabriel Aubry and, and, and fellow Frenchman, of course, uh, Gabriel Aubry in Calumbra 85. That is a surprise. Nunez improved last time around to an 8-9, 108-9, uh, and got that little improvement in the first sector, put his first, the fastest first sector in, but that's only good enough for sixth position. He's all of four tenths of a second away from Paul and 0 0.075 away from moving forward one position, but that would leave him, of course, on the third row of the grid, fifth and sixth we're talking about there. He's in sixth at the moment, that 0 0.075 would put him in fifth. Needs to find just over two and a half tenths to move forward onto the next row of the grid. Two and a half minutes to go through the complex in turn 10 Dane Cameron, Dane middle sector, John. Yes, yes, absolutely. Comes through, turn number 11, dives down. He only needs 0 .087, <laughs> and he finds it, and he finds a little more, 0 0.094. He is now ahead of his teammates. So 0 0.087, the deficit was turned into a 0 0.094 uh, advantage 
a 108412, another qualifying record. Uh, somebody's going to have to have a word with the Acura team, Penske boys, and say, um, yeah, OK, stop now. Stop now before you throw it at the scenery, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, for for this team, this is the uh, this would would be the uh, third, fourth consecutive pole position for Acura, second in a row for Dane Cameron because he was also on the pole last time these cars raced, which was a long time ago now. It seems like uh, at Mid Ohio at the end of last month. So he's looking for his second consecutive pole. Here is Dane Cameron. Yeah, no uh, prototypes, of course, at the Charlotte Roval last weekend just concerned at the moment for Jim Maguire's car it's only done an out lap and an in lap and isn't involved in qualifying at all currently so performance tech motorsports no. with their Orica LMP2 uh, propping up the field sadly and uh, not yeah. going to join the session now no I, I think the reason for that uh, uh, Johnny is that, that Jim he's making his debut in the IMSA Weather Tech Sports Car Championship he's not on the same pace as these other guys he's coming out of a LMP3 cars this is his I think it's his first race in a P2 car anyway anywhere he's been racing P3 cars in Europe uh, as you will well know uh, and he's not on the same pace so I think he just turned a lap, just turned a couple of slow laps uh, and don't get in the way of anybody else I'm sure that's a strategy for that number 38 team he's not going to challenge the other guys in LMP2 he's going to start uh, in the fourth position in LMP2 for the race ahead of the GTLM cars uh, and so you know irrespective of what his overall lap time is Ricky Taylor the only DPI out on the circuit you know check that Sebastian Bordet still out there as well and he did his best lap last yeah. time around a 109 <laughs> flat uh, yeah. which is still six tenths away and still puts him in seventh position so he's gone ahead uh, of uh, Gabriel Aubry yeah. Uh, and now comes into the pit lane. Your there, John, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think <laughs> so. In comes Ricky Taylor. So confirmed now then for the 2020 Motul Petit Le Mans. It will be Dean Cameron for Acura Team Penske, who leads the cars round at just after half past midday on Saturday uh, here at Michelin Raceway Road, Atlanta. Another pole position, Jeremy, for Dean and another pole position for Acura Team Penske. That's right. This will be a sixth pole position in IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. And uh, he's hoping to turn around a dismal season for that number six team and come away with a win. He'd love, love to capitalise on this pole position, get a win tomorrow uh, as, a, as an early birthday celebration because he's got a birthday on Sunday as Dane Cameron. Your thoughts, Johnny Palmer? It's a good way to go qualifying, isn't it? It's great, yeah, because, um, you know, you, you never lose track of the narrative. It's uh, short and sharp, and you've really got to deliver, you know, in a very short space of time indeed. But I do like the fact that you have to start on the times that you qualify on. So it's a balancing act between whether you push on into the session to burn the fuel off, get the car lighter, or whether you join the session late, as exactly what BMW did in GTLM, just do six laps, I think, was the case uh, for one of those uh, M8s, and keep the, the, the bulk of, of the tyre wear for the race. But um, no, plenty of entertainment. That's the kind of the name of the game these days, trying to make qualifying as pleasing to the crowd as the race will be tomorrow. And a huge celebration down at PR1 Matheson Motorsports as well. Patrick Kelly doing the business, and finally he can step out of the car and celebrate with the team. So both uh, pole sitting cars in DPI and in LMP2 now heading up to the far end of the pit lane uh, for the post session interviews. And congratulations to Acura Team Penske who lock out the front row for the 2020 edition of Petit Le Mans tomorrow. Just after midday, the race starts all the way through till 10.05 tomorrow night, local time. Um, which, as we said, will include the most nighttime hours ever. So, a record breaking race in that sense as well. A uh, wry smile, no, a big grin, I would say, on Dane Cameron's face as a result of that. Good day for Acura, Jeremy. They'll be uh, celebrating. That's a nice press release to have to write this evening. Yeah, they've got a handle on this track. Uh, you know, a month ago, Acuras were were victorious in both GTD and in DPI, and that's exactly the same performance they've shown today. They'll have the pole position going into tomorrow's race for both of those classes. 
So that's uh, Jeremy Shaw, and he was in the IMSA Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre with Jeremy Shaw and me, John Hindhoff. Shea mm -hmm. Adam was our VP Racing Field Pit, and Paddock, uh, reporter, Acura on pole in two of the four classes, DPI and GTD. Congratulations to Team Penske and Shank Racing. Well done to Tony Garcia and Corvette Racing, who have the GT Le Mans pole. And a blazing lap from Patrick Kelly for PR1 oh. Matheson Motorsports in LMP2. Those will be our four pole sitters for the 2020 Motul Petit Le Mans when they come to the line on Saturday.